Hey guys, welcome back to Green Chat. If you're new to Green Chat, this is a place where you can ask me questions and I can give you my opinion to hopefully formulate your own on the upcoming MMO Pantheon Rise of the Fallen. Today we're going to be jumping in more questions from you guys uh, from the comments. Definitely 100% of these topics we've already covered, but with questions and intrigue and different perspectives, comes more to talk about. So hopefully today uh, we're going to be trying to answer the question, is Pantheon Rise of the Fallen the game for you? My name is Cleese, and let's get started. All right, guys, so I picked out some questions from your guys' comments, and basically I ran into three different things, or three different topics that keep coming up is loot, or how you loot, uh, death penalty, and complexity of the game, or how complex this game needs to be uh, to make it enjoyable for a certain audience. So what I wanted to go through was these topics, and uh, I've been thinking about them a lot, and I'm sure we all have, and uh, go through this and see what you think about my opinion anyways, as far as these topics go. Now, I know there's a lot of other aspects to Pantheon Rise of Fallen and MMOs in general that would make the game for you or not for you, but I feel like these are gonna be game breakers for a certain chunk of the audience. Not so much game breakers, but uh, I think in the end of it, uh, you know, the way it is, or even if it's not exactly how you wanted it, a lot of people will just kind of be like, eh, and just deal with it. But these things keep coming up, or these, these, these perspectives keep coming up, and I just wanted to address it here and um, just go through it and see what you guys think. And hopefully, when we're all done, uh, we'll answer that question, is Pantheon Rise of Fallen the kind of game for you? And if it's not, I don't think it's gonna be in your best interest to try to wrangle it into making it the game you want it to be versus the game that it is. Uh, that's the thing with a lot of the current uh, trends with especially MMOs is people think if enough people shout in one corner, that the game will change to or compromise itself to your needs versus not. So, uh, and I will bring up a couple examples of one game I know for sure that has done that, has not compromised to a majority of its audience, and is completely successful because its audience that it does have that does like that type of game is extremely dedicated, and that's what I think uh, Pantheon is going for. First up, we have a comment from Georgie. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, this is the one on complexity. He really went into this in depth in the comments, like kind of like a short essay. It was pretty impressive, I must say. Uh, so basically, one of them are the fact is, oh, excuse me. Basically, what he's going into here is uh, the fact is too many MMOs right now are too easy, too much handholding, not enough complexity, and how we engage with the mobs. And some uh, some companies' combat is not by adjusting the whole game experience, but by adding aspects to combat. Uh, what being said in the or that's being said in the community so basically uh, what he's mentioning here is games are super not complex which I would totally agree uh, they're totally on rails you jump in any MMO right now it's like go here go there go here oh you need to find this go here and then the, the websites are obviously very helpful but majority of the time you really don't need to jump into a website unless you're trying to do a very complex quest and you're too tired or too lazy or, you know, maybe you just can't handle it, but you can't read the in-game text or can't be bothered with it, and you just want the, the knit and gritty, the meat and potatoes, or whatever you want to call it, or the meat and not the potatoes, uh, with your quest. So, uh, complexity is gone. Another thing that's gone in modern MMOs is mob aggro distance, a level aggro factors, so basically what level you are, stuff like that, like if you're too high, they don't even care. Uh, mob pathing, mob reaction factors, aggro based on reputation, aggro based on alignment, these are present in the game, but not to the level that they used to be. It used to be very, I mean, you could basically run into a city, think you're fine, and all of a sudden you're not fine because the guild's like, I personally don't like you, but the guards might be cool with you because they're corrupt, but I don't because I'm not corrupt. Things like that. Basically, the point is, is through complexity comes engagement in the game versus engagement with the creators of the game to make the game more interesting from the audience's perspective. So basically the narrators or the creators of what is to become is heavily influenced by the audience, which a lot, you know, a lot of people might think that makes a complete a lot of sense, but there's plenty of games out there that do not do that. Um, you know, a lot of like RPGs and stuff like that, when they create them like Mass Effect, I'm just throwing a few out there, Dark Souls, uh, you know, they don't really, they're not sitting there bantering back and forth with their audience. They're kind of like, you know, keeping it all secret and they're like, get ready, we got something for you. Um, and that's really just not how it works with MMOs. MMOs through the development takes forever and it's for engaging with their community. For whatever reason, that's just how it is. That's just how it rolls. 
So with that, uh, as far as complexity goes in Pantheon Rise of the Fallen, it will be a very complex game. You won't simply be able to, like, they're going to have dynamic quest mobs or quest events and stuff like that. Uh, you're going to have to be very resourceful and do even research to get quests done at some points, especially epic quests or those epic spells that they're going to have in the game. Uh, they're going to be very complex, and that's going to be an engaging, uh, you know, a road for engaging content. Uh, with that comes time. So the more complex you make something, the more time it takes. And it can really, uh, what do you call it, a, an increasing return. So with complexity comes much more time to complete uh, the similar tasks that you would complete in other MMOs. So for instance, getting you know your awesome armor set might take you uh, eight months versus taking you uh, a month and a half of dedicated playtime. This is dedicated playtime. I mean, eight months seems like a long time to some people, but that is what this game is trying to get back to. That's how long it used to take. Uh, very not normal. I mean, very normal anyways. Like even World of Warcraft, for example, it would take you around a year uh, to get to max level when it first came out. That's the kind of game it was, and now it's grown into the point where it takes, you know, a couple weeks or whatever. Especially if you do Recruit Friend or uh, some of the leveling little trick doos they got in there, it could take days. So basically what I'm getting at is Pantheon Rise of Fallen is going to be a modern it's going to be a modern game, yes, but it will be complex with complexity comes time. So you can't have a lot of people are kind of like saying I want a modernized version of EQ and they keep throwing the word modernized out there. That's why I brought complexity up is you can't have complexity and depth in a game without it taking a lot of time. So uh, when they mention combat speed, when they mention this will slow the game down or aspects of this game need to be more modernized, I think the context isn't entirely relative or they're synonymous or whatever you want to call it in the sense that uh, with, with those features or with complexity will be time and that's really got to be something that you're into or something that you enjoy. So grinds, uh, XP grinds, reputation grinds, uh, just doing something that will net you very little in the sense of XP or reputation to get a quest item, stuff like that. So it's gonna be a complex game and it's gonna take a lot of time, but uh, that's really what I wanted to cover here. So thanks Dorge for the question, or Dorje, Dorge, Pfft, my gosh. Uh, I'm going too fast for my own brain right now. But hey, thanks for the question, man. And uh, we're gonna move on to the next point. Oh, and correction, it was a comment. Uh, Dorje sent me not a question. So moving on, I just uh, obliterated his comment over that long, expressive way he was uh again uh dorje was going on about many other things so don't take it as i was using pulling from his narrative to create an example of complexity next up we have a comment from chris gaylor he says i prefer auto loot it makes the game more enjoyable while you're playing hey i think what he means by auto loot is you run over you kill a guy and it's like bam in your bags or interface pops up and you're like boop 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 and uh, done, done, bam, boom. You can just keep on moving on. Also, AK907 Silvers kind of jumped on this and said, I agree with most of what you're saying. I do, however, like new loot system in EQ1 compared to the old manual looting of corpses. After 16 years of manually looting, I really don't miss it at all and much prefer the new advanced loot system. It really saves a lot of time and makes it much easier to distribute loot in a group, etc. So I'm kind of clumping these together. Eric Soto is also jumping on this, and uh, he's saying he likes the loot system that was in Final Fantasy XI. I kind of read through his comment. It's pretty complicated because it's very detailed as far as Final Fantasy XI goes, and if you've never played it, you probably won't really understand it. But what it sounds like is you run through a dungeon. At the end, there's a big chest, and all the loot is there. So it kind of speeds up con or excuse me, speeds up looting as far as that goes, and it makes uh, distribution much more efficient because then you run into that thing where you kill the first boss or whatever, the main bad guy or something, and then this guy's like, well, it's kind of an upgrade for me, and it's a major upgrade for you, but, you know, we're not really friends. We're not even in the same guild, so we're both going to roll evenly because we both need the item versus, you know, let's say a different item drops later, and this was a no-loot item, and now you can't exchange it, and now it's all weird, and uh, kind of, you know, streamlines loot as far as making it most effective as possible, which has been a problem in many MMOs. So now we're going to be talking about looting. I know we're back on looting, and everybody loves talking about them some looting. So I was thinking about these comments, and it was pretty interesting. So uh, I, I've been, you know, we've been going over these loot systems to make sense, and you know, Visionary Realms is like, oh, no, we're going to do anything we can to make this game enjoyable for everybody that wants to play, but we're going to stick to our tenants and stuff like that. Now, a lot of these features that I think is, we're getting kind of confused here is Brad McQuaid has specifically mentioned he wants to go to the roots of MMOs back to win. It was something that was uh, as epic as it was basically in EverQuest. 
And though EverQuest has gained the ability for these auto-looting systems, that was implemented much later. A lot of these systems were all implemented much later uh, after the roots uh, really had taken hold and the games had gotten more modernized. So that's something to consider. Now, it does seem really neat, and basically you look at it, uh, you look at it as a quality of uh, a life feature. Like it's super convenient for the player to deal with this. It really doesn't bring any immersive uh, anything to the game for somebody who just wants this feature in the game. Basically, some type of looting system that streamlines it and makes it almost seamless for the player playing. Like, uh, you know, you kill something, it automatically goes in your bags. You kill something, a little window pops up that you don't have to spend time with an animation. You don't have to spend time with anything else. It's just there, and you click what you want, and then you move on. Uh, so, me personally, I'm in the complete opposite direction. I think there's other people like that as well. Uh, where when you loot something, you know, I want to actually bend over and loot it. I don't know why. It just makes that much more of an immersive feeling. Uh, it gives you the feeling like you could skip something. I don't even know why that's important. Uh, and yeah, it does open up the door for a bunch of different stuff. You know, somebody taking your stuff, whatever's going on there. But, uh, you know, you know, you kill something and then you immediately die. And then when you get back, somebody stole your loot. You know, all sorts of interesting things can happen with that system. And this really foolproofs it if you go with these systems. Now, to say that Pantheon Rise of Fallen is going to go with a newer system, more modern, in the sense of, you know, basically loot just gets thrown in your bag. Uh, they may. Who knows? They may. I don't think they will, but they may. But really, this where this all culminates to, or really uh, where I'm getting at, is the new modern loot systems really make the game feel more like uh, it's a theme park type feature. Theme park MMOs have that type of looting system in it, which I feel like Pantheon Rise of the Fallen or Visionary Realms is really going to turn away from, uh, keeping any theme parky feel away from their game. It's just the feel of that system. If the system feels theme parky, I think, you know, what I mean by that is it's in games like World of Warcraft is theme parky. I think Final Fantasy, you can consider Final Fantasy 14 theme parky. Um, you know, Guild Wars 2, sort of. Uh, you know, stuff like that. If it's going to be in those games, they're going to try to shy away from that, I think. Not just because they want to be different, but because they want to shy away from those types of features that have tarnished, at least in so many, you know, many people's opinions, MMOs. So, so basically, yeah, I mean... Pantheon MMO is going to have some type of loot system. Uh, it might not be for you. It might be for you. Who knows? Uh, but what I do think they will do, I mean, I think a decent compromise for a loot system uh, is like WoW did it. I mean, I, I hate to bring WoW into it because it's totally theme parky, but uh, uh, they did have uh, different aspects to it. But what is convenient or what does make sense to kind of compromise between both parties is if you kill a group of mobs and you bend over and you loot one, you'll see the loot present from, you know, mobs within like a you know, a five meter radius of where you're bending over, which kind of makes sense in the sense that you can bend over once and then kind of scramble through bags and stuff like that. But uh, that's, you know, eh, you know, take that where you want it and stick it in a pipe and smoke it. But one thing that I think is important uh, to note here is whatever system Pantheon Reservoir does decide to go with, if they do decide to go with a full blown auto load system where it just pops into your bags, and then they go, ooh, man, we really don't like the feel of that. Uh, it's going to be really hard for them to redact that change, to go backwards, you know, and say, oh, no, no we're going to take this away. You know, look at flying mounts in MMOs. You know, developers gave it to the, to the community, and they take it away, and everybody freaks out. I mean, that's kind of a big aspect of the game, but it so is looting, you know. That's a quality of life feature, and it's a convenience feature uh, at the end of the day. So, yeah, I mean, we got to think, they're going to probably put the most basic looting system in the game possible and then grow from there depending on what their community says because if they like core features looting is a core feature i would say you know that's definitely a core feature so if they focus on that feature and make it really basic and then you know their game will be like oh we're gonna get to you know we're gonna get to the loot system we hear you guys complaints we're working on it uh we're just working a little bit more on this right here making the humans faces look less crazy or something they're working on features that make much more sense just to let some time go by maybe and uh you know maybe that's why they do that developers are like oh we're working on it but uh yeah then they, you know then they start hashing it through what do we want to do here let's listen to the community okay this makes sense in the lore this makes sense conceptually as far as what a character is capable of or maybe they'll even put items in the game like maybe gnomes will be able to make something like the auto looter 
5,000 where it's a little robot or something or a magical being that runs around and loots for you, you know? So in the end of the day, you can maybe get a, a drop that increases that if it makes sense, you know, you get a drop that makes you auto loot everything. That's great. Uh, but you know, right out of the gates, level one guy and rags, just like magically looting everything, teleporting with telekinesis items to his bags is a little far fetched. And again, they won't be able to go backwards in time if it pisses us off. Now, if it pisses us off that the loot system sucks super bad because it's so basic and takes forever and makes everybody want to just punch themselves in the face, they can be like, oh, here you go. Take this. Have this new thing. And we're like, oh, okay, thanks. Versus the other way. So, something to think about. And again, uh, you know, if modern MMO looting system is, you know, really going to drag you down that hard, you know, something to think about. Something to think about. You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm going on forever. But hey, looting is looting. Looting is looting. So I'm going to loot on to the next one. All right, so next up we have a few comments. Uh, let's start with Chris Gaylor again. Chris Gaylor saying, and you guys guessed it, we're talking about something very true and dear to the Pantheon, Pantheon universe. Chris Gaylor saying, nope, no corpse runs. It slows the play of the game down. Eric Seto is jumping in there with, I agree with you. I think it just takes a form of weak, or excuse me, I think just take a form of weakness from after death like Final Fantasy XI did. Chris Gaylor's then jumping back. I do. I will not play this game if Corpse Run is over one hour. I do not mind the game itself being hard, but a Corpse Run takes hours, and it would kill the game. Uh, so, uh, and you know, plenty of people are actually saying this right now about the Corpse Run business, and it's it's hot topic, hot topic. Um, so, it got me thinking. Uh, so I started thinking about EverQuest in specific, and I started thinking, hey, when would a Corpse Run take over one hour? When the base game was released. Uh, so when it would take over an hour is when you are a complete ding dong and do something entirely stupid and get yourself compromised so hard that it's going to take way over an hour to get your to get your corpse back. You know, you get some buffs on you and you're like, I can do this. You get yourself in a position where you're like, oh gosh, I'm going to die and I'm dead. And now I'm, how am I even going to get back to my body? I need somebody to summon my corpse and you start spawning, you know, you know, asking in trade and stuff like that. Like, hey, can you guys help me out? And then it takes a long, long time, costs you money, whatever, get you, you know, get all that effort back. So... Moving that forward, uh, I started thinking like, hey, when, uh, what are the times? And, that, and the only thing else I could think of is raiding. So being a complete ding dong or raiding, uh, you could find yourself in a corpse run that would take hours plus. Uh, and you know, maybe Pantheon has some plan to streamline specifically uh, raiding, for instance, maybe like a mass, mass res or something like that, but it takes forever or it would take forever for one, you know, a couple of clerics to sit there and start resing like 40 people because uh, they would get the XP back with certain reses, certain reses you wouldn't. So it would be beneficial to get certain reses from specific healers from your team. So uh, anyways, yeah, so there's that, you know, there's only those two instances. So I really don't think Corpse Runs is going to really dampen the game from being crazy terrible for a long time. I mean, you're gonna have to be really high level, and I think I've mentioned this before. But furthermore, if they remove uh, this from the game, from it being hard, you know, keeping the game hard, but removing corpse runs. Uh, so what does that mean? It means it can kill you. Obviously, you can die during the comment or during the combat, but you still have to do a corpse run, or you don't have to do a corpse run. So what does the corpse run really do for you in your mind. Uh, does it make things more challenging? Absolutely. I think it, it has to. Like, how does, like, oh my gosh, if we, okay, we're gonna go around this corner, we're gonna try out this little battle, we just plan everything out we're supposed to do, and if we fail, we will maybe be dealing with a three to five hour corpse recovery type situation, because we're way deep in here, trying to do this super hard quest that's super epic. Um, bam, so there you go. It increases the difficulty in the sense that your adrenaline will be thamping. Also, also, uh, think about it like this. A lot of games where they don't have types of corpse runs or corpse recoveries, when you try to encounter, you can go in there and they go, okay, everybody, throw yourself to the left flank and see what happens. And you all do that and boom, then you recover super fast. And you're like, all right, that didn't work. Let's try the right flank, bam. And then you can get like, you know, I don't know, shoot, you can get like uh, 20 attempts in and what? 30 minutes, 45 minutes, but mostly depending on how long those attempts really last. But what my point basically is, is uh, having corpse runs in the game makes it substantially more difficult. The, the level of difficulty is raised, uh, I don't know, 20 times. 
So if you don't have corpse runs in the game, if they don't take time on really hard encounters, per se, I mean, not necessarily explicitly take a long time. Let's say a corpse run takes 20 minutes. Let's just be, you know, I guess you can call that generous. Let's say a corpse run uh, takes 20 minutes. How does that play out for you actually in the encounters that you're failing at over and over? That means you get, what, four tries an hour? If that, actually, you wouldn't even get that because you have prep time. So maybe two to three tries an hour uh, versus maybe three tries in 15 minutes if you're failing really hard. So uh, I don't think... I think the purpose of corpse runs is to substantially boost the difficulty of the game without actually making it uh, just silly hard. Like, stand exactly right here, do exactly this, dance around this little pillar, uh, you know, playing the old dance game, or, uh, you know, you have to execute this heal at the exact right moment, and RNG can play into it too, and all this other stuff. When you can't get super practiced in an encounter, uh, you have to rely on your wits and really just your skill uh, and how good you are at keeping a cool head, which you'd be surprised how many people freak out when they play MMO and they smash your keyboard and stuff like that. So I would, or I'm not really question, but I would say if Pantheon MMO, or excuse me, if Pantheon Rise of the Fallen is something that you're super interested in, uh, I think you would be, uh, you know, not, not necessarily Chris Gaylor and Eric Soto. I mean, I know you guys are probably super in the game and you just don't think there's a lot of value in it but you really you lose value or you don't really realize how much value is in something until you lose it and i know that games have turned their back on the whole corpse run thing um but those games have also changed in number of ways that made corpse runs make no sense now when you go back to uh pantheon if you could immediately spawn in the exact same spot that you died at or just before you know just kind of rewind a little bit um i think the game would lose a lot of its challenge almost a majority it would be super crazy easy because you would throw yourself at the wall three times and then say all right we're clearly undergeared for this we clearly don't have the dps we clearly don't have that let's rework this and redo that boom uh, but this game is about, you know, like I said before, complexity. These encounters are going to have to be played out in a different way to where your knowledge and, uh, you know, just how you approach these encounters is going to be, have to be that much more honed. Raid leaders are going to be that much better. Uh, guild leaders and stuff like that. Uh, basically, anybody who is leading any type of encounter in this game, it's going to be substantially more difficult and there's going to be, uh, you know, much more play on the fly which is much cooler. It's much less uh, scripted events, basically. You do more on the fly, which is which is awesome, I think. So anyways, that's my rant on, you know, corpse runs and death stuff. Basically, I don't think you can have the difficulty that we will have in Pantheon Rise of Fallen without it. You guys might disagree, but uh, I don't think, you know, if, if Pantheon's the game for you, I think you would be for corpse runs. Now, the thing is, over an hour, I think Chris Gaylor uh, it won't be over an hour for you. Probably not. Uh, if you go hardcore rating, you probably would say in your mind, oh, this is just an exception to my little one-hour rule. But anything you're doing in the world that's rather, you know, genuinely normal, like you're just adventuring with your buddies, doing your thing, having your fun times, I don't think you'll see over an hour. Now, if you're buffing yourself up, you know, cleric, druid, and then this other guy to get past his certain points, to get super deep in this dungeon to talk to some NPC to turn in one little quest item... Uh, for your epic and you decided to just do this to get it over with and then halfway through you know see invisible you know see invisibility happens and then oh my god you know your stuff breaks and you die and then now this corpse run turns into a 10-hour affair and you're like oh my god you know that might happen might happen uh but i think generally speaking under an hour is pretty normal and hey that's it that's it man all right that's my rant it's not really a rant but you know corpse runs uh, I think this should be a thing, and uh, that's it. Let's move on. All right, guys, so those are those topics. Basically, the complexity of the game, uh, the looting system, and death penalty. I think those are going to be the cruxes of what makes or breaks Pantheon Rise of Fallen. Not so much is the game going to be successful or not, but whether or not players want to be involved in that game. So if it's for you, hey, that's awesome. If it's not, that's also cool. Uh, you should still try it out, though. So hopefully with this, uh, I mean, I, mean, I kind of just gave my little tidbits on, on the topics, but basically 
you know, uh, death penalty, if that's not your thing, it's probably going to be in the game, and it's probably going to be pretty harsh, like super harsh. So rating is going to be a, definitely a different environment than you're used to. If you're used to very modern uh, modern games out there with super easy rating systems where if you die, you're like, oh, yeah, you're right outside the door. I'll be right there. Oh, bam. And your resets are every, like, what, five, ten minutes, or people are rushing back to get their potions up and all their food, stuff like that. Uh, looting in the game, I have a feeling it's going to be very, very chill, like I said, and then not chill, but, uh, you know, super, you know, like simple, like you bend over, oh, you can loot this, this, or that. And if uh, something more comes into the game, uh, that may happen, but in the beginning, it'll probably be that way. Uh, and then the complexity of the game. The game's going to be rather complex. You won't be able to easily navigate your way through the world. Uh, there won't be any maps, stuff like that. I didn't even mention that before. Ding dong. But yeah, complexity is going to be definitely a big part of the environment that you're interfacing with. And if that's not your jive, if you're like, man, I don't even know what to do. Uh, this game sucks. I don't know what to do. I never know. I'm always lost. Uh, if that's not your jazz, then nuts, you know. Uh, but hey, if it is your jazz, if you like being all into it and getting deep in the nit and gritty, then hey, Pantheon Rise of Fallen, man. So uh, with that, another thing I wanted to mention was Brad McQuaid had quoted or, you know, not totally a quote, but basically he wants to take MMOs back to its roots. So with that statement, you could say implicatorily, that's even a word, I think I just made it up, that a lot of these features that have in uh, the modern games right now, he wants to say, hey, shoot, get away, get away from me, just go away. I don't want you in my life. Get out of here. Uh, and hey, and he's making this for a very core audience. He's not making this game for you know he's not trying to fold this into a algorithm that will suit the masses needs it's a specific uh target audience which he's mentioned many times and because that is successful like i was saying earlier i want to bring this up final fantasy 14 that game will not bend its will to its audience at all it has a very specific model uh it takes forever uh, and for example, I think that game is probably one of the best, one of the best when I say this, one of the best, one of the best MMOs I've ever played. And it's literally too difficult for me to play it right now with my lifestyle. It's, I like the MMO. I'd be playing it right now if I was probably a different, you know, had a different life, but it doesn't accommodate that. And I think that's what Brad's going with here. What he's kind of saying is like, you know, I understand that I'm making a product that might not even work for you but it doesn't have to, to be successful or to be something amazing. And I think he thinks, at least I think many people think, if you're making a product that works in any any socket, then uh, you might have a really dumbed down product, really watered down product, because it's, you know, it's not gonna have anything that really spikes out at you, because anybody can do it. Hopefully that's not too unfortunate for you. But anyways, guys, with that, we're gonna call it there. If you guys like what you saw, please consider liking and subscribing to get any notifications for future uploads I do. Um, if you have any questions for me, please leave in the in the comments below. And again, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again really soon.